the second hour of the Chris McCarthy Show. I'm very, uh, very honored, and I know you will be too. And uh, to know we have uh, our sheriff, America's sheriff, Tom Hodgson here, uh, here in studio with us uh, to join us to discuss, obviously, uh, the, the pertinent events of the day. We know, we certainly know, unfortunately, what one of them is. But of course, when we have the sheriff, we always like to pick his brain on a whole bunch of other stuff. So, good morning, Sheriff. How are you? Um, good morning, Chris. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah. Can you? All right. We'll um, we'll figure this out here in a second. We get a little technical uh, technical thing. We, we is that better? Yeah. All right. You perfect. must have the touch. You just, I, uh, yeah. yeah. I just keep twisting knobs, Sheriff, until go. something works. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I'm under no illusion I know how to do anything, folks. <laughs> if you uh, if you want to see us, we also are streaming this live on Facebook. And Tim, when we go to commercials, do the, do the cameras continue recording sound? Okay, beautiful. You can talk about whatever you want. We never know, right, Sheriff? So we, we don't want to have a Ronald Reagan open, open hot mic moment. Uh, well, Sheriff, good morning. Uh, thanks for joining us. Let's talk about uh, the tragedy in Florida. Yeah, and that that um, that really was a, an incredible tragedy tra- tragedy for for the the families and for the for the whole community and and, and the nation. Really, uh, this is this is one more too many that we've seen time and time again. Um, and it really is time to to find the answers and start to address it so that we can minimize the risks that this will ever ever occur again. Do you know that sheriff down there? I think I, I met him last year at the uh, major major uh, county sheriff's uh, meeting, but um, but you don't have he's not one of the guys you have a working relationship with. I don't work with him on a, on a daily basis. No. Okay, all right. Um, what what are your thoughts on the role of law enforcement in protecting schools? Well, I think it's it's a critical role. Uh, we we have to uh, first of all, I think it's great to have law enforcement in the schools just as role models for the right. kids. Right. Um, that's that's a really important thing that we need to do, particularly with this younger generation and um, and giving them a, a perspective that they can be. Uh, friendly with law enforcement, that law enforcement can be helpful to them. Right. Hopefully someone might even think about taking on that career. Sure. But um, but I do believe that, that protecting the schools is really a community uh, initiative that okay. not only requires law enforcement's role, which is a very important one, uh, but also uh, with regards to really drilling down and dealing with these mental health issues mm-hmm. that, that exist. Uh, there's so many. There are so many things that happened uh, that were wrong in this situation that right. could have prevented it, um, and and of course the the whole issue around the law enforcement response is um, is disappointing. Mm-hmm. But but there's more. I believe there's more to that. Okay. I uh, I know when when people started immediately. Of course, the emotions are high. Everybody's looking right t- to point the blame as to where where uh, this could have been prevented. Uh, but I have to tell you when I heard that. There was a deputy there armed who s- didn't go in. Right. And the shots continued for another four to six minutes. That said something to me about, um, and I, I'm not saying I'm correct, but it is completely contrary to what we as police officers have been trained to do. Mm-hmm. Our instincts are you go into the battle and you mitigate the situation as quickly as you can. And just so people who understand, prior to becoming the, the elected sheriff here in Bristol County, which is a, you know an administrative role, you're not a, you know, but you were actually a frontline police officer oh, yeah. in Maryland. Just oh, so yeah. people understand that that you sure you, you were a police officer much like this this police officer down in Florida right. one time. Yeah. And and so that's why we got in the business. That's why cops get into this business. Because we believe that we're gonna get into it and not that in the end we, we feel as strongly that we're uh, as, as able to do as much as we thought, but but certainly we got into it to save the world, to find to get the bad right. guys away from the good people right. and protect them. So in this instance, when I heard that, I said, wait a minute, that doesn't sound right to me, that this, this deputy was right there, heard the shots, knows those are kids in the school that he probably would have worked with many of them, sure. um, and just stood idle. I I immediately asked the question: Did this guy get a stand down order? Right. Was there a policy already in place in that school right. that if a situation occurs that you do not respond by yourself until you get backup, or 
did the officer report it in, say, you know, shots are fi- shots fired, and the the person that he was speaking to at dispatch or wherever said, stand down. Right. But then to learn that three more stood down, two or three, I don't know what the number is now, right. but but that 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 just doesn't sound right to mm-hmm. me. And then it made me wonder, um, was this a, a failed uh, procedure and policy on the part of law enforcement that was in place? That, right. And some people have said to me, well, why would that officer quit then? Well, first of all, anybody in law enforcement, when you get involved in any kind of a shooting, even mm-hmm. if it's a good, it's, it's a shoot where you're defending yourself and you kill somebody. Right. And you were completely justified, you still can't just wash away the feelings and wondering, geez, I wonder if that person was just out there really trying to, you know, didn't have any money, was trying to do this or that, yeah. or was, was mentally ill, and I ended up killing him. You're going to second guess yourself. You second guess it. And so imagine working in that school, knowing 17 kids, even if you got an order to stand down, right. you would be, have this inner conflict going, wait a minute, but I still should have gone in. Right. And that guilt would have been so overwhelming, I think. Yes. Um, but, but again, it's still early. We need to really drill in and find out what happened before we can start um, really understanding how to fix it. I, I will say this, Sheriff. Uh, very early on in this, I, I saw the superintendent of schools down there uh, who came from Chicago Public Schools mm-hmm. originally, where they have a ton of gun control and a ton of gun violence uh, in, with their kids uh, in, in, in the schools and outside of the schools. And he was right away calling for gun control. So was the sheriff. And I thought... That's weird that they would be doing that so quickly. So then I just went and looked, and it was on their website, and I wrote a blog about this, and I don't know if it's still up, but we, we captured the information. He, on his, the front page, the introduction to the, to the what about the superintendent of schools down there, who's got a Harvard MBA, he points out that he reduced uh, the prison, what, what do they call it, the, the school-to-prison pipeline, which, of course, we know is left-wing rhetoric, foolishness. There's no school to, you know, to, my dad was a school administrator when you were the sheriff. I'm sure you guys never had a conversation about how you're going to lock up all his kids, right? I mean, right. it's just crazy. It's, it's left-wing lunacy. And he put, put down there that he had re- reduced police involvement with the schools by 65%, right? 60, he was bragging about that. And so you know there's an anti-law enforcement mentality a, a, a one that they're very proud of, at least within that school district. And and we talked about it last week here on the show, and I noticed Jake Tapper picked it up, not from me, but just picked it up uh, this weekend, and so did, so did Tucker Carlson. It really is a hostile environment for the police as far as some of these school administrators are concerned. No question. And, and there's another component to this too, Chris, which is the, the uh, I saw a report that they were, they decided not to arrest kids in school for right. committing crimes right. because it'll affect their numbers when they're applying for grants to get because the more people they have that commit crimes and are arrested in their schools the less money they're going to get mm-hmm. so so this but that goes to the heart of a deeper problem yes. and it and it actually crosses the spectrum of all of it even gets into the immigration issue around these sanctuaries and all of that because what's happening is you have people administrators and others who have these liberal views who want to advance their agendas and break down preventing for example don't don't arrest people for crimes right don't report certain things don't work with the police um you know you got out in california this attorney general saying if you as a business owner work with with uh, ICE, law right. enforcement, to, right. to help keep your community and your, your business safe, we're going to prosecute you. It's unbelievable. So what's happening is you have people that are saying we want less communication to advance our own agendas that have nothing to do with what your ultimate responsibility is, which is to keep people safe. Right. These kids. These it's a total kids. breakdown of societal norms. Right. And, and, and so if there's any lesson, one of the most fundamental lessons in all this is – Stop playing with the system right. to, to, my, to manipulate it in a way that's going to benefit either you as an administrator to make you look a little better at the expense of 17 lives. Right. That's what's going on here. It, and we're seeing it. And let me just add yeah, one more thing, Chris. It's, 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 it's consistent across the board with what you're seeing about all these sanctuary, I mean, these um, angel moms and dads who right. have lost loved ones. Right? To illegal immigrants. Right. To, we, to illegal criminal illegal aliens. And... Because you got people saying in government, don't communicate with with uh, the the authorities and right. let them know where these people are. Right. So so we can 
you know, make ourselves look better politically and get some personal advantage out of it, even if it is going to cost your family their life. It 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 it's is outrageous. It's it's unbelievable. And if if when we were t- when people like you were warning people about this stuff happening, people a lot of people go, ah, that's crazy, right? Right. And and you go, well, there are, now there are dead children because of this. Yes. Because of this mentality, anti law enforcement, um, anti traditional society and traditional roles of, of the government they're dead kids yes and and the answer and this was what this is what made me curious about that superintendent of schools was when i saw him have knowing again i come from a family of of, of educators um knowing how my devastated my father would have been had he been on the sure. watch and this had happened in his school the idea that a guy could appear at a gun control rally just a couple days like the kids are still in the morgue i thought to myself who is this guy who is it, and, and what is what did he not do that makes him feel like he's got to get up there and and blame the Second Amendment and the National Rifle Association and good good law-abiding citizens f- for the kids that died on his watch? And that's what made me go to his website and start looking at, looking at him. And now you understand why those kids are dead. And you know what? what and, and you and you had the you had the the sheriff himself right. standing up there on CNN, you know, beating the heck out of at the NRA. And, and people exercising their Second Amendment right as though they're the problem when he knew at the moment he was saying that, that his person, his deputy, the That's first right. deputy, he hadn't even talked about the other three yet, hadn't even responded to Gwen for whatever reason we don't know. Right. But the point is, he didn't. Right. And, um, and so, look, it's, it's like saying th- this is what often happens when this kind of a situation happens. They, they begin, the, the far left people start saying, this is a problem with the Second Amendment. We need to take, basically, they almost want to take it away. Yeah. That, that nobody should have a right to guns. That's like saying, you know what? We're telling all the auto manufacturers, you can no longer manufacture cars in the United States of America right. because we have people that are using them to go out and kill people by drinking and driving. Right. Okay. Right. It makes no sense. And those yeah. are the simplistic, shallow answers you get from these, these sort of left-leaning people right. who don't want to drill down and really understand that, no, how about ma- how about the breakup of families? And right. how about the, looking at the history of this guy and the mental health problem he has? Right. And, and, and the fact that you didn't have systems in place that should have captured it one, two, 20 some odd times right. when it was brought to their attention. Correct. That is what you ought to be yelling and screaming about. Absolutely. Folks, we have Sheriff uh, Tom Hodgson here live in studio. We're going to take a very quick break. Remember, if you want to watch us uh, right now, you can go to uh, YouTube. It's a WBSM channel. But I'll tell you, for the best way to, for it to function, make sure you click the little blue subscribe button. doesn't cost you anything, but, but that's a great way to keep up with what's going on here live on uh, WBSM. We'll take a quick break when we come back. Everyone wants to save a little money. Luckily, with a number of rebate and incentive programs, National Grid has got you covered. Get familiar at ngrid.com slash save.
Hey, welcome back, folks. Uh, we have Sheriff Tom Hodgson here in studio. And I appreciate that. Again, as I mentioned, we, we are streaming this live on YouTube. So thank God I shaved this morning uh, before I came in. Um, so if you want to, go to YouTube, go to the WBSM channel, and make sure you click the subscribe button. It's free, but but it'll benefit you tremendously. Sheriff, we're going to take some phone calls? Love to. All right, great. Hey, thank you so much for holding your live with Sheriff Tom Hodgson on WBSM. Hey, Chris and Sheriff Hodgson. How are you today? Good morning, caller. Great, great. Um, I always love hearing from you, Sheriff. Um, i got to tell you what you were saying at the end of the segment about the uh, language of liberalism when it comes to the NRA is they, you know, liberals don't use the language of uh, pragmatism or problem solving or l even logic. They, they have a drumbeat language. It's designed around getting people to lockstep and put their hand in the air and, and march uh, in the streets. It's not about solving a problem. And I hear that every time there's a gun shooting or it's a shooting, especially at a school. And then you hear the drumbeat language. It's a very short, you know, set of words and, it's the type of thing that, uh, you know, gets people to, to, to want to go out and protest, but it's not about solving a problem. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, I just want to point out something and take it outside of the school issue that happened last week, something that contemporary that just happened this week. You know, um, up in Winchester and at the library, there's a 22 year old woman studying, uh, to get her advanced degree in, uh, you know, in medicine, and uh, some uh, crazed person walked in with a knife and stabbed her to death on Saturday. Mm -hmm. And the same thing happened two years ago in uh, Taunton at uh, the Bertucci's restaurant in the Macy's. That's right. And that person was taken down by um, a law, law enforcement officer that was having dinner with his family and luckily had a uh, his weapon with him and gave him a chance to put the weapon down, and, and he ended up shooting the per, you know this perpetrator to death. And to me, the, you know, we're totally looking at this backwards. I, mean, I, I, you know, believe in the NRA. I'm not a member. I believe in the people that uh, that um, uh, conceal carry and that, that uh, have licenses. And uh, I think there should be more people out there because they're the type of people that would have ran into that school, unlike the sheriffs down there that or the deputies that didn't run in. Um, <clears throat> and I, I, you know, this whole thing is looked at not from a logical and a, a you know. A pragmatic perspective, but it's it's an emotional perspective, and I think um, you know cooler heads should prevail and really take a look at the facts. Hey, thank you for the call, Sheriff. Go ahead. You know uh, the caller is is right on. Right. Uh, I, I, I don't think uh, anyone could have said it any better. He's he, it is all about this idea that 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 there are certain talking points that immediately come up, and I would I would encourage people to go back and look at the other shootings and see what the the, the, the same right. uh, liberal uh, talking points were. And ask yourself a question. For all these people who were so cr critical and kept blaming guns and guns and guns, um, they, they, they quiet down until something else happens again and then they, they, they reemerge. Right. But, but rather than sit down, and I think it's because it takes, in, in some respects, it takes too much effort and work to drill down and really look at what is right. the problem. We do have serious mental health problems, more so than we've ever seen in our country. Um, Guns have been around forever, right? Yeah. And, and it hasn't been until the last 25, 30 years that we started to see a real emergence of violence. But that that is contributed by a lot of different things. Reinforcement right. of videos and and uh, and things you see on TV. I mean, the increased number. I mean, we used to watch, you know, Dennis the Menace, Father right. Knows Best, things like that. Right. Were, were, were shows that promoted family values. Uh, and the cowboy shows and things. Yeah, which, which, were, even if there was well, violence, it was violence... It was just different. It wasn't. It was. I don't know how to put it, but, but you know, you, look, you're always rooting for John Wayne, right? Because he was always on the on the right yeah. side. In the end, the bad guys got what was coming to him. Yeah, and and bonanza things like that. They weren't. They weren't these you know serious Rambo. Uh, right. You know, go in, shoot them up, kill them, uh, and and make it make it this wanton violence for the sake of entertainment. Right. It, it, it was it was That's directed violence with, with 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 just like it is because at times there is a reason why we we give police officers guns and the right to use violence is because sometimes it is necessary right so so you know the, the long and short of this is is that we have to look at this problem for what it is and the people have to, to stop in their busy worlds mm -hmm. and really look at it and say what do we need to do to change it we it, clearly mental health is a huge issue um we need to focus on i think that every year in every school around this country they they need to have as part of the orientation uh a program for the parents and for the kids to talk to the kids and say hey kids mm -hmm. you may have somebody in your classroom 
that you meet or in another class that you think might be a little distant, a little off, right. acting a little different. And you know what? That that person might be going through something, and you could be your big help to them if you just let your guidance counselor know that you mm -hmm. think that this person might be feeling sad or whatever. Right. And 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 um and not only would it be good for him, but it'd be good for the school. Sure. And then you you teach the kids about looking for that kind of stuff right. in addition to other things that have to be done, of course. Yeah. But but I think these are the kinds of things that that are real solutions around the real problem, not hey, get rid of guns. It's guns are the problem. And that's the end of it because when you do, even if you did that, right. you're still going to have the mental health problem. Of course, and you're still going to find ways to kill people. Of course, and, and then the other thing too, sheriff, uh, to your to your to your uh, your point about um, the 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 um, to the point about um, the mental health component is number one, most gun related deaths are suicides. I think it's two thirds of them, and uh, and kids are much more likely to, to to die from something like a drug overdose or a car accident or or, or suicide. Uh, which all of things that, with the exception of the car accidents, I guess, would be something that you could steer a guidance, them towards a guidance counselor that helps the kid. Because as bad as this school shooting is, and I'm certainly not minimizing this, the likelihood that you would be killed in a school shooting is got to be under 1%, way under 1%, I would think. I mean, there's been a lot. I mean, it's a very tragic situation, but the, the mental health issue, which is really paramount here, bleeds across all things. And it's, it, it's really about the kid who's got the problem more than it is the people he might hurt because the chances are most people with mental health problems really aren't going to hurt anybody except themselves. Right. Yeah. I well, think that's, that's a good point. Yeah, we're going to go right, right to the phones here again. Uh, hey, thank you so much for holding your live with Sheriff Hodgson on WBSM. Yeah, Chris, I had a question for the sheriff. Sure, go ahead. He's Actually, here. a couple of them. Um, I think it's uh, individuals like himself that could help us out on securing the schools um, as, a, a, you know, uh, running the prison. And my question was to the sheriff, with a two-tier fence system, I know it'll look like hell, <laughs> but would that work to secure the schools, and wouldn't the teachers be a second line of defense at that point, if they were willing to uh, do do that, such as a uh, job of carrying a uh, weapon, uh, also would you secure it in the schools? But my question was the two-tier fence system, such as, like, your prison, working in an opposite direction, you might say. Hey, thanks for the call. Yeah, I think um, certainly fencing is is something that can deter mm -hmm. from people from being able to get in, but you'd have to have somebody monitoring it because right. they, they are always looking for ways to beat the system. They'll sure. find ways to find <clears> – <throat> they'd have more freedom than somebody in a prison would to get a hold of chain link cutters. So right. somebody would be finding ways to, to beat the system. So you, it, that, that really would be a pretty uh, comprehensive sort of approach, but one that's fair to look at, I think. You want to look at everything. But I think the other thing is to to the point about those teachers who would want to carry mm -hmm. uh, in the schools, be properly trained, mm -hmm. as President Trump said, uh, go through a minimum standard training uh, that was was approved. Um, they would want to volunteer to carry. Certainly, they would meet certain criteria, and they would you you know some people said well they, they won't know when they come inside the school if a situation happens. And officers come up on somebody with a weapon. They don't know whether it's the bad guy or not. Well, there are ways to 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 do that. Mm -hmm. You can have those people wearing certain types of, of um, <clears throat> um, armbands mm -hmm. or what have you. But more to the point is, you pay those teachers a little extra for wanting mm -hmm. to 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 carry to take on that responsibility, and then you put them regionally or in and around the school geographically, mm -hmm. right. so that your your area is covered. And those are the kinds of things that really ought to be looked at mm -hmm. as part of the the um, strengthening of the interior security. I, I my, my only my only thoughts on having the teachers armed is just that I'm thinking of myself as a as a young kid, right, in the school, and if my teacher had a gun, I would just be fascinated staring at that gun. You know, just we're already distracted enough. I can imagine what it's like to be a high school kid with these girls in the yoga pants uh, today, right? Never mind if, I, if if so. If a girl in yoga pants and my teacher's got a gun, forget about it. I never would have made it through geometry. <laughs> um, but I think I think your point is correct, which is that everything's got to be analyzed. And what may work, for an example, in the Taunton schools here in Bristol County may not work in the Raynham schools, as an example, neighboring communities, but with different things. And I do also believe it's very important that we keep this at the local level, because the local uh, sheriff, the local police departments, and the local school administrators, and also to, to, to include people like the, 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 the maintenance staff, they're going to know, what, you know what, what lock really needs 
doesn't really work well and things sure. like that. You're never going to get that from the federal government. Right. But, but, but working in conjunction with law, local law enforcement, working in conjunction with the local school district, can harden those targets really pretty quick. Correct, right? Right. Well, we've been doing, I mean, for, for years now, my, my, my staff uh, under Colonel Gavigan's direction, <clears throat> who runs our Homeland Security Task Force, right. has been doing audits at schools, going in, looking at, you know, the, the security systems, looking mm -hmm. at the, uh, the doors, the points of entry, different, different um, vulnerable areas in the school for not only for, for public safety in regards to your security, but also with regards to fire hazards, things like right. that. Um, <clears throat> these are, I agree with you, it should be done at the local level. I think if you, if you have a standard sort of um, blueprint mm -hmm. that, that says these are the areas that we think you can utilize to harden your, your targets. Right. Um, if the feds want to give some additional monies for that. Right. Uh, I think that's their role, isn't it? Money, probably? Yeah, probably. But, but that the state, the people... The government that's closest to the people are generally the government that knows the best. Absolutely. Uh, <clears throat> although I, we'll see what happens when it comes out about what what went on with the, um, uh, the Broward County Sheriff's deputies. But but no, more often than not, <clears throat> you're going to get the best response, and you're going to get people who are intimately involved every day. And right. as opposed to having a bigger bureaucratic sort of overlay right. of how you think it ought to be done, because as you said, one one school plant may not fit the design for what you're doing may not fit one school plant versus another um it's a um it's true if you, if you just think about it the other, the other thing is that local people a lot of the police officers or deputies they probably went to that school i mean generally speaking you don't migrate much in law enforcement most people stay within the community they were raised that's where they start their career sometimes it happens obviously uh but, you know, you, you think about a lot of the guys who are on the New Bedford Police Department went to New Bedford High School or went to New Bedford sure. Volk, you know, or and the guys in Fairhaven and so on and so forth. I can think of many of the police officers in Freetown, where I grew up, they went to Aponiquet High School, you know, right. so they know the school. Of course, we have new buildings and things, but it really is. But when I, I was just thinking about it, because I think whenever these things happen at schools, I always think of my dad, who's passed away a long time ago. But, you know, like, for instance, you know, if you ask the school principal, hey, what, what's the door that the kids actually go outside to have a cigarette, right? What, what, I mean, we know they're not supposed to, but everybody knows there are certain kids who smoke, they sneak outside. You know, that would be a door, right? The federal government would never know that. But the principal goes, yeah, well, listen, that's the door. Absolutely. We're going to make sure that's the one they might come through type of thing. And the maintenance guys are going to say, yeah, well, you know, that, that, those, the alarm system never works at that, so the skylight above the gym or whatever. You know, right. you're never going to get that type of stuff. For, but the kid in the school who wants to come to the school to attack his own school, he knows that information as well, right? So it really is local, right? And yeah, it is local. And but and to the and to President Trump's credit, you know, he <clears throat> immediately brought in the those very people that you're talking about, mm -hmm. Chris, the, because he knows that they're the ones that know. He brought in the teachers; they are the ones that see these kids every day. They are the ones that know where the issues and the problems are. They're the ones that can be honest with them and tell them, "Look, here's where the breakdowns are." Right. Um, the 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 law enforcement people he brought in. He brought in. Uh, other people from from other uh, professions, the, the parents who, who've lost the, lo the loved ones, mm -hmm. because he wanted to hear from everybody and understand it. Because when you start to 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 sort of from the top down from a bureaucratic approach, you're you're you're, you're doing it from sort of an outsider's view, right. without the as you say the intimate knowledge of where where the kids are going out the door smoking. <laughs> right. what, what's our most you know, if you ask a principal, what what do you see as the most vulnerable area? Ask your teachers. Right. What are the, I mean, I remember telling uh, Governor Romney when he was when he was first running. Mm -hmm. I said, if you want to find out how we can begin to solve these issues and problems that are affecting our communities, particularly in our prisons and other places, talk to the educators. Mm -hmm. They are the ones that right. see these kids every day. And I don't care whether you go to a Boston school or you go to a New Bedford school, or you bring in people from five different communities across the state, those teachers are all going to pretty much give you the same common denominators of what the problems are. Right. And how then we know, here's the problems, now how do we deal with them? Right, right. It's interesting, I went to, a, to the <laughs> opioid task force, an opioid meeting, which I had never been to before. I mean, this is what you deal with, so you know this information. But... Uh, uh, Mrs. Waxer, of course, uh, Bob Waxer's wife of Bob, yes. who does the reading program at your jail, or did at one point. I'm not, yeah. yeah, yeah. Changing lives of literature. Yeah, yeah. Changing lives of literature. <laughs> she got up. She was a school teacher and, of course, lost her son to, to the opioid crisis um, and said she could look at kids and say, that kid's going to have a drug problem. 
or he's likely to have it, or she's likely to have a drug problem if they get started on it. And I would think it's the same thing for kids who, who look, the chances of your school, again, I think this is important to stress, is so remote that your school is going to be attacked by a shooter. It doesn't mean you shouldn't arm for it, prepare for it, all that good stuff. But the kid in that classroom who's got mental health issues and emotional problems is more likely to hurt himself right. you know, than anything else. And so you could ban all the guns, but these kids are still going to kill, hurt themselves right? unless we focus on preventing them from hurting themselves and hurting hurting their classmates. Right. right. And, and, and they also, but keep in mind too, that there's a greater risk that they will hurt other kids by today's standard because, you know, when kids don't, we, we see it with the emergence of gangs. When, when nobody cares to ask you, hey, um, how'd you do in school today? How'd you do on the test? Right. Uh, nobody recognizes any of your achievements. Mm -hmm. Then you begin looking and seeking out somewhere by human nature to find somebody that will. And that's right. why we have so many emer right. the emergence of gangs because right. they're like, hey, it, it may not be something that they would encourage me to do in school, like steal a car, right. but at least I know if I steal that car, my gang members that I'm trying to become part of their family will at least recognize I did something. Right, right. And, and, and it's that simple. And, and it's, it's that important that what you just said, Chris, the, 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 the teacher that like Mrs. Waxler, right. they do know. Right. They see these kids, and they, they, they don't need to be spending their time as social workers, but they do unfortunately have this classroom of kids where they can see it very quickly right and all we've right. got to figure out now is what's the best channel where once they identify it to the next group or person that that will be carried through right Unlike right what happened down in florida yeah they, they simply can see the change of behavior and then you just make the referral yes yeah yeah we're gonna take a very quick break when we come back we'll go back to the phones if you want to join join us and have a question for the sheriff you can at 508 Nine nine six zero five. But remember, you, you'll also be able to, if you've missed some of this interview, we'll be posting it later at WBSM.com so you can watch the thing in its entirety. Hey, we're back uh, here live with uh, Sheriff Hodgson in studio. We're going to go right to the phones you folks have been holding patiently. Thanks so much for holding. You're live with Sheriff Hodgson. Good afternoon, Sheriff and Mr. Chris. How Good morning, Colin. Um, I think you hit the nail right on the head, Sheriff, when, when you opened the segment out with saying that we have to look at the, the stuff that these people are on or their psyche, the medication that is on record through all of these school shootings and all of this chaos these people have been on the same type of medications, well, what we call medications. So, if you're talking we about were, the psychoactive drugs like uh, Ritalin yeah, or, or the antidepressants, things like that. Yes, the yeah. dangerous thing with that kind of poison, I don't like to call it medicine because it's poison. The dangerous thing with the combination of that and like a uh, video game and like shooter games, yeah, talking to someone who spent about three years doing that because I spent some time online with my with my two sons while they were at their mom's house. It was a way of me still communicating with them and interacting mm -hmm. with them. So I spent some time playing some video games, and some of the video games that these children are playing are uh, no joke. They really get into your mind. They turn you into a very violent person. Um, it's not funny. 
uh, when I saw that it was doing it to me, I had to step away from it. But that was after like three and a half years. And it wasn't easy to step away from. It was like a detox of, of anything else that I detoxed out of my life. It had me controlled for hours out of my day. Hmm. So if you have a child that is taking these psychoactive poisons and then they're sitting in front of a television and they're playing these shooter games for hours and hours and hours. Which and is so realistic. Up, so if yeah. folks, people at home, it's if you don't ridiculous. realize it, most of you probably listening, you never played one. Uh, they're so oh, realistic. They, it's like you're really killing people. And it's not not only is it so realistic, like you're really killing people. Sometimes when you get shot in the game, you feel like a shock go through your body, and it feels it's we it's a weird feeling that used to go through me. And when that started happening, I was really saying, "What in the hell is going on with this? This is just a game." I've been I'm I'm the era of video games when they started. I'm 44 years old this right. year, right. so I'm the era of this stuff. But it's a far you know I mean? thanks thanks so much for calling me. But it's a far cry from from uh, Donkey Kong and uh, Space Invaders. Yeah. These really, yeah, I mean, these first person shooter games are. It's not going to affect everybody, but I think he's right. When you start to get, you've got a fractured personality and you've already got mental health issues, then you layer this stuff on top of it, plus the abandonment. Well, you know, President Trump said this during his um, his meeting there with uh, various people down on this very issue, that the, the, these solutions to this problem are common sense. Right. And as the caller just said, it's, it's, it's not a surprise to any of us that the way – you know, we condition our minds mm -hmm. is through repetitive behaviors. Right. It's through repetitive messages. And that's how children learn. That's how, how we all learn certain things, certain traditions, certain things that we, we're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And if you're constantly reinforcing in your brain and replaying time and time again that, you know, pick up a gun, shoot, pick up a gun, shoot, right. pick up a gun, shoot, that what's happening is you're programming yourself. In fact, the military Years ago, the military began going to war games on computer. And mm -hmm. you know why they did? Because they knew that if they, there was no emotion attached to right. the war game itself out in the field, right. that if we get you into a war game on a screen, it becomes a game. Mm -hmm. And there will be no emotion attached. And when you get out in the real field, you're just going to see it as a game. Right. Because we programmed you when the enemy popped up, kill him. Boom, well, boom. And, and Sheriff, you probably remember from, from your, your days as a police officer. I know when I went through the military police academy, we, we did the, the trainings where, you know, it was very much less sophisticated. It was a video. It was a movie. You're watching. You're standing in front of a movie screen, but you have to shoot or not shoot. Right. It was a shoot or not shoot drill where someone gets out of the car be, because they, and they have a weapon or they get out of the car and they're waving like, a, you know, a bouquet of flowers or something. And, you know, and whether you shoot them or not. shoot. Them. And I will tell you that that once you started doing that training, you felt as re like it was as real as anything else. And I can sure. imagine if you did it as, a, you know, repetitively starting at the age of like 14, 13, 12, something like that, that it could have an effect on people. Right. There's no doubt about it. But we're not talking, I mean, we're, we're, we're not, I agree with you 100%. And I, but I think that those, those scenarios that we had, as you said, during right. training are different than watching these, these video games oh. where it sort of go out, you know, it's even kill the cops, right? Right. I mean, that, what was that, that, um, the, the, the real popular one that was, um, I, I know. I and you, you'd kill, you could kill, you, you go out, rob people, and then you go and the you cops kill chase women. you and right. you kill the cops. And, and, and that's what they're, that's what they're, that's what they're constantly. You know what, I'll, you know, I'll be driving home, Sheriff, and it'll pop into my head. Yeah. Uh, hot pursuit, something like that. Something like that. Yeah. But the, uh, no, the point, my, my point is, it is it, I, I know how effective it was just on stimulating me. Right, that that I thought it was real, you know, in my emotions, sure. that, in the training that I can't even imagine as a real child going through that. We're gonna, we, we've had some great people holding, so we're going to go back to the phone because okay. here. Thanks for holding your live in WBSM. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning, caller. Uh, I would like to uh, first of all, I'd like to commend the sheriff and uh, and Councilor Carney. Uh, two summers ago, uh, we had some of uh, people from the inmate program that painted the, the Ford Middle School. And uh, they did a really good job. Well, and uh, I'd like to commend you on that program. Well, thank you for that. They, the inmates do, do an awesome job. They really do. It was Grand Theft Auto. Grand Theft one of our one of our one of our law enforcement members here. He knew and he texted me. And I appreciate that. Let's go. Uh, let's go back to the phones. Hey, thanks so much for holding your live with Sheriff Hodge on WBSM. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know you had a guest. That's all right. It's I the can't sheriff, be the high sheriff. All the time. I got to make a few pennies. Well, millions of people are counting on you. 
<laughs> well, I just say hello to the sheriff and uh, I call her. Um, keep keep going ahead there. No. And um, yeah, I'd like to. The highways are a mess. We need the guys out there. Well, just let us know where, and we'll be out there. We're out there every day. So he lives it's, behind. It's, the yeah, highway, I know so. you guys. Uh, we appreciate that. That's a great. Uh, public service to the people. I just hope they all appreciate it. Yeah, we're happy to do all right, it. Thank you for thanks. the fight, and uh, thanks very much. Thanks, Larry. Um, yeah, and I would imagine the guys like to get out of the get out of the, the jail and get out there, get some fresh air, and move around. Yeah, and they, they, you know, they don't get many thank yous sitting in a 7-foot by 10-foot cell. So right. when people drive by or mayor walks up or a selectman says, hey, thanks so much for what you're doing, it right. means the world to them. Right. And I want, the more I can get them exposed to good feelings associated with good behaviors, right. That's what I want to program right. them to, to understand while I have them in my custody as opposed to sitting in their cell and, and um, not feeling that they've accomplished much of anything. No, no. It, it, it's, it, it's a, look, it's a great program, and it saves, saves a lot of money, and they're out there. Of course, do you put them out there at this time of year when it's cold? Oh, yeah. Oh, all right. Yeah, and they're, they're, look, they're out. Uh, they do graffiti removal. They, they, these guys and girls um, are really um, – they're excellent. They, they, uh, they volunteer to do it, and they go out, and they love doing it, and people – Hey, taxpayers can not for profits can have their money go much further rather than right. spending it doing the painting or, or something else when inmates want to do it and everybody wins. Sure, sure. Hey, we're gonna take a very quick break. When we come back, we're gonna go right back to the phones. We have Sheriff Hodgson. Remember, folks, if you've missed part of the interview, you can go to wbsm.com. We'll have it up later today. And and if you want to continue watching us right now live, you can on YouTube and then go to the WBSM channel on YouTube and make sure you click the blue subscribe button. It is free and it's really to your benefit. We'll be right back. Hey, well, welcome back to the second hour of the Chris McCarthy Show. We have uh, Sheriff Tom Hodson here in the studio with us. Um, hey, Sheriff, just we've been talking school shootings here, but let's talk a little bit about uh, why I call you America's Sheriff, which is the immigration issue. You've been you were banging away on this thing for years and years and years. Uh, almost one of the few voices in the wilderness, particularly here in Massachusetts. Yeah, about and, twenty years. Yeah, yeah, right. And um, and then. Uh, y y your, some of your proposals are now being considered at the top level, which one of them is to arrest officials who are acting illegally and harboring illegal criminal aliens. And at first, a lot of people didn't take that seriously when you proposed it to Congress about a year ago. But now the Secretary of Homeland Security, she about two months ago mentioned to the United States Senate that they're considering that. Uh, what are your thoughts? Well, uh, look, um, I, I think that probably they wanted to try to see early on. I spoke to the Attorney General back uh, Right, uh, I think it was last March before I was going to testify before Congress on this. Um, and um, I think 
that they really wanted to see if there was a way that they could get these people to understand that, look, by, by discouraging, by hiding people out, that otherwise ICE uh, would be able to get out of the communities and prevent uh, someone from, some citizens from being killed right. or seriously injured, uh, they, they, they were hoping that they would see that as a reasonable thing to do and not have to go even further. You're but talking about the sanctuary city elected officials. Sure. Right. And that, and, but that wasn't to be. Rahm Emanuel no. doubled down. Uh, Marty Walsh out of Boston doubled down. Kurt Atone out of Somerville doubled down. And now it even becomes more important because think about this. We talked about it at the beginning of the show. You now have elected officials. Think about what just happened in Florida. Right. Because people were finding ways to not communicate really what was going on and protect people like kids, not arresting them for crimes down in Florida and what have you, keeping them in that environment with other kids where there was a potential for even more danger for innocent people. Right. It's exactly what they're doing as elected officials. They're saying, you know what? I don't like the federal law the way right. it is, and I'm not going to comply with it. I'm going to pick and choose what I want and protect these this group of people and, and discourage anyone from cooperating with law enforcement so they have the maximum information to keep people safe. You're so right. It's identical. It's, it, there's no question. It's so, identical. There's no question. And so, so the, the bottom line is, if you don't like the law, Marty Walsh, if you don't like the law, Kurt Atone or Rahm Emanuel, then you lobby to change it. Right. But our system was set up. The law is in place. If Congress doesn't want to do it, want to want to change the law, well, you know what? Then it's the law. Mm -hmm. But but. People that might not like the way you, you're using their tax dollars for your city might say, well, you know what? I don't like that, so I'm not going to I'm not going to pay it. You're going to sit back and say, well, no big deal. Of right. course you're not. No. So so this is outrageous that they would think it was OK to advance their own sort of political agendas over the safety of the people of those communities. And yes, as far as I'm concerned, it's a violation of Section 1324, Title 8 of the U.S. Code. If you attempt to harbor or conceal anyone you know to be in the country illegally, it's a felony. Right. And no elected official should be treated any different than any citizen who would be uh, responsible if they were to do the same thing. They're in full rebellion against the federal government. Yeah. It's incredible. And, and frankly, the safety of their own people right. that they were elected to protect. I almost feel That's like some of them are amazing. I feel like some of them back themselves into a corner here politically, uh, but, you know, because they go along with the rhetoric and they didn't really think it would have much, uh, much effect. And now they're stuck. And the public sees it. I don't care whether they're Democrats, Independents, or Republicans. Everybody in this country, first and foremost, wants to be safe, and they want their right. families to be safe. The, the Trump administration, he got elected for a number of reasons, but immigration, illegal immigration, which I think is very important because I've noticed, too, they, they're conflating the two. They're, putting it all, they're calling it all immigration yeah, when course, it's very it. different. It's illegal immigration. I, I, Donald Trump got elected in many ways, ways because of illegal immigration. No question. No question about it. People were tired of... Uh, people coming into the country illegally, then being given telephones, being pushed in the front of the line to get housing when other people, seniors who are trying to get housing, can't get in housing because um, there's now, tw for example, 28%, I think, in Fall River of public housing are people who are here illegally. Really? I believe it's 28%. So so when you look at that, and, and if, you, if our mothers, who both have passed, God rest their souls, if they... if they were on fixed incomes because our parent, our fathers died. Right. Um, and they needed, they paid in all their lives. Right. And now they said, okay, you qualify. 28%. You, I believe it's 28. Somewhere in that range though. Yeah. I, I think it's, it's somewhere around there. Um, but, but if you, if you, that's, that's what I've been told. So, yeah. so, but so our parents, our, our mothers go and they apply and they go, oh, you qualify, but I'm sorry. You have to wait a couple of years because you know what? 20, 28% of the people that are in there are already occupying the space you could have had, right. and they're here illegally. Right, right. Because there's a fixed amount of of assets, fixed amount of resources. There's sure. only so many apartments uh, that you have. This, that's amazing. So even if we just low, if we just bring it down to 20%, so if you knock on five doors, one of those in the public housing in Fort River is going to be an illegal. Sure. And so, and so, but when you look at it, you go around all these all these different cities, and you're going to find this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Not not the least of which, the 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 the, the the scams that are in place, you know, where where these these people who came here legally, parents came here, maybe some people came legally, they're on green cards. They, mm -hmm. they started getting, they qualified for assistance. They were here legally. They decide to leave, but they give their, their, their child, who's not here legally, the money. They, 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 uh -huh. 
and they're back in the country. Right. So they the, the child picks up the, the money. Right. There's, there's all kinds of scams going sure. on. Sure. So, um, and look, the fraud, the the fraud at the RMVs, the fraud of of stolen identifications that is going on, um, it, 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 sex trafficking, human trafficking, out of control. So the people of the United States have figured it out finally. Right. The, the, the party's over. They figured out what these elected officials have been doing, which is not anything that's really focused on the benefit of them. In 20 years, Chris, 20 years, just take six, six facets of immigration reform. Right. Right? The wall, the um, E-Verify, these things. If I said to you, and you're a business person. I'm going to give you 20 years to figure out each one of these things. And each one you gave three years to, you still got two years left over, and you got none of it right. done. You think I'm going to keep you higher? No. Why no, are we doing this with these elected officials? Absolutely. Not. Hey, Sheriff, thank you so much for joining us uh, here on the Chris McCarthy Show. Folks, if you didn't get a chance to see the interview, remember, it will be up on the WBSM.com website uh, and, and our YouTube channel. Thanks, thanks again. For thanks, thanks, for thanks, thanks so much. Hey, folks, remember, we have Barry coming up. Uh, we have the local and, and the uh, state, <laughs> federal news, national news. And then we have Barry coming in for three hours. And, of course, right after that, the great Howie Carr. See you tomorrow, folks. Thanks.